class. So today we are going to talk about, first of all, about some background financial theory. So some students who studied about finance before can help me to explain about this. Okay. Uh, let's start with present value and interest rates. So hands up. Who has studied about present value before? Okay, what can you tell us about present value? value less next year than this year. Yes? Because the amount of money always raising and that's why it's becoming less valuable. Okay, so we have money supply is increasing. <coughs> Do you understand money supply? Yes. Yeah. You're from Russia, right? So I guess you understand that better than students in Korea. Because Russia has higher inflation. What is inflation now in Russia? Probably um, the official Ten, I think. About 10%. But in fact, it's higher. So if I give everybody here one dollar, right? Then I'm selling a bicycle. Then you can pay one dollar for the bicycle. Okay? But then I, I increase the money supply. I give everybody two dollars. Now you can pay two dollars for the bicycle. So the price of the bicycle goes up. Okay? So if we increase the money supply, we put more money into the economy. We can have inflation, and the money will be worth less next year. Does everybody understand inflation? Yes. Right? Inflation means the price is going up. So, we have inflation. That's included in the interest rate. So, I'm going to charge you some interest because of inflation. People who studied present value before, what else is there about why the money is more valuable today. Apart from inflation, one more important thing. Interest rate. This is going to be included in the interest rate. Inflation and something else. Is there any other reason? Let's say there was no inflation. There is no inflation, right? Just imagine. So I give you, you an apple. Apple has no inflation. So I give you an apple today or an apple next year. Which do you prefer? Why? Uncertainty. Uncertainty. Okay. Maybe I won't be here next year. You might not get an apple, or you won't be here next year, right? Or there. <coughs> Any other reason why you prefer an apple today? Let's say that it's certain. I promise you, I make a contract. And even if I'm not here, you have a legal contract, you're going to get an apple next year. So you're sure you're going to get an apple next year. Is there any other reason you prefer an apple? Now do you prefer an apple today or next year? Today. Still prefer today? Why? It will spoil. Hmm? It will be spoiled. No, you can get an, a fresh apple, the same apple, exactly the same. Because the expectation is going down. People's expectation, what do you mean? So, 
for example, now I want eating this apple, mm -hmm. but next year I don't know. Okay, so really you're talking about patience, right? Do you understand patience? Are you a patient person? No. <laughs> no? So maybe you prefer. You prefer to eat the apple now than next year. Because you want to eat the apple now. Okay? That's called patience. So in the history, and even nowadays, in <coughs> most Islamic countries, they don't have any interest rate. Hundreds of years ago, also the Catholic Church said that interest rate was wrong. Okay? So also many philosophers said it's wrong to charge the interest rate. They thought people who charged interest was like evil, right? I give you money and you have to give me more money back, right? So the church said that's wrong. So it used to be that's why the Jewish people used in Europe used to do the banking, because uh, the Catholic Church didn't allow the Catholic people to lend money. And of course, people didn't want to lend money, they just got the same amount back. But also nowadays in some Islamic countries, they're not allowed to charge interest. They get around that by giving some gift, they call some gift instead of interest. Okay. So, Irvine Fisher, so the, the, those philosophers didn't really understand about this idea, right? So, Irvine Fisher was the first person that talked about this patience, which is the real, he calls the real interest rate. So this is the name here. So the real rate of interest is determined by the market participants' preferences. So what do people prefer? I prefer to have the apple now. So to calculate the real interest rate, we take the nominal interest rate and minus inflation uh, for uh, financial products which have no risk. Okay? So <clears throat> Currently, we look on US government bonds as having no risk or risk free assets. Okay? Do you understand risk free? If you buy a 10 year government bond from the US, do you think that bond basically means the US government is going to pay you the money back in 10 years? Okay? It's like you're loaning the money to the US government using a bond. It's just a paper. The paper says, let's say, $1 million. It's almost like cash, because when you get the cash, the government of the US, if you have a dollar, it says the government will pay you one dollar, right? So bond is very similar. You get this paper, and it says $1 million, government will pay back, okay? They usually pay some coupon or interest too. So we'll pay one million dollars in two thousand and twenty-five. Okay? So the US government will give you one million dollars in two thousand and twenty-five. That's a bond. How much are you going to pay for this paper today? Are you going to pay one million dollars for this paper? Why not? Inflation, right? Uncert uncertainty we don't have in this case. Okay? And patience. So just inflation and patience. That's why, how much are you going to give the US government? Just guess. For this paper which says the government will pay you $1 million in 10 years. How much are you going to give them today? Two, you're going to give them $2 million? Get back $1 million? <laughs> you're just joking? Yes? How much will you pay them today? Seven hundred thousand. Okay, maybe if you pay seven hundred thousand, what will the interest rate be? Right? We can use the equation to find out. Okay, and then this is called the yield. Whatever. If I pay seven hundred thousand today, how much do I get interest every year? That's called the yield. So we can calculate that, we're not going to do now using an equation, okay? So we can see that online. So depending, what happens is they have an auction. 
People come to the auction, you say 700,000. Will somebody pay more money? How much will you pay? More? 800,000? Okay, anybody else pay 900,000? You pay 900,000? Anybody pay 950,000? Okay, but that's what happens. We sell this at the auction, and depending on the market, that's what decides the yield or the interest rate I'm going to get on the bond. Okay? The price I sell the bond for. Then you can take this paper. Can you sell this paper to other people later? You buy at the auction. Can you sell it to somebody else? Yes. Yes, you can, right? It doesn't have your name. It doesn't say the government will only pay Chris one million dollars. Okay? The government will pay anybody one million dollars. So you can sell this paper to somebody else. So the price of the bond changes, and the yield or the interest rate changes constantly every day, right? depending on how much people are willing to pay for the bond. But we say this is a risk-free bond. Other government bonds are not risk-free, but US government bond is risk-free, or German government bond is risk-free, okay? Swiss government bond is risk-free. Why? Why are those government bonds risk-free, and the Greek government bond is not risk-free? They have stable government. Yes, but mm -hmm. uh, Greece is not. Not stable government, right? And the other reason? And economics is unstable. Mainly the economy, right? Oh, yeah. The US has many big companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Coca Cola, McDonald's. They can tax those companies and pay you back your money, right? They can also tax the landowners, the homeowners. They don't have enough money. They can make a tax for your house. You have to pay the tax. US government will pay back the money. Okay? So also there's reputation and history. US government doesn't default on its debt, right? In the history for a long time, or Germany for a long since the war, right? So people believe Germany has a very strong economy. They think in ten years there's no risk. Germany will pay back the money. What do you think? Do you trust the US government to pay you back the money in 10 years? No? Why not? <laughs> World War? Mm. Well, the United States had an economic crisis in 2007, but it was still able to pay back its debt. Okay, one of the re other advantages of the US is the dollar is the world reserve currency. So during the crisis in 2007, the US printed a lot of dollars, right? They just printed the dollar. So another thing the US can do is print a dollar and pay you. Right? So China wasn't so happy because China had a lot of this. China had a lot of US bonds. They say the law bonds, and then the US just start printing dollars and say, here you go, I pay back, right? Even though I increase the money supply, US advantage is the risk is spread all over the world because 50% of transactions are carried out in the US dollar. So people in Africa, in Korea, if I want to change dollars to, or euros to Korean won, I need to change to the US dollar first, right? So this was a situation which was started after the Second World War. The US, before gold was the world reserve, but after the Second World War, the US dollar became the world reserve currency, right? So they have another advantage. So I guess even if there is a crisis in the US, they're going to print the dollars and be able to pay back, right? So any other risk they can't pay back? You in the revolution. Hmm? New energy revolution. New energy revolution? That's good, right? <laughs> we have a lot of new energy. <coughs> what do you mean exactly? Uh, oil, oil by the dharma for new yeah. energy revolution. Uh, so the world, it gets a lower status as world reserve currency? Because currently also oil is bought and sold in US dollars, right? <coughs> so if the oil gets less important, the US dollar gets less important. Okay? So anyway, basically if there's a world war or a nuclear war, then anyway, people are in a really bad situation, right? 
So we have, we have to find some asset in the world that we can make as the base risk-free asset. So the German government bonds or Swiss government bond, US government bond is usually seen as the risk-free, right? And then we can rate the other assets from there, okay? Which is more risky, the, usually? Governments or companies? Companies. companies, right? Governments can always tax the people. Companies might have some problems. So companies, lending money to companies is more risky, okay? So this one is the basic with no uncertainty. So here we only have, for the US government, 10-year bonds, just inflation and the real interest rate. So this allows us to calculate the real interest rate, okay? The real interest rate is the nominal interest rate. Do you understand nominal? How do you say nominal in Korea? Normal. 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 Interest rate. Normal. Right? You say inflation in Korea. Inflation. So US government bonds, they have an inflation protected rate. Do you understand inflation protected? Yes. Do you understand protection? Yes. It means that it's uh, this bond, they are going to take away inflation. Okay? They will uh, cut, <coughs> give you the inflation. So let's look at the, this tells us then the real interest rate because we already have no uncertainty for US government bonds. And then if they agree to pay you the inflation, then we take out inflation. So this bond we are only left with real interest rate. So this is the United States government bonds, also called treasuries, okay? Bond or treasury. Treasury is a specific word for the US government bonds. They also have secretary of the treasury, their minister of finance, old English. So you can buy a bond for different time, three months or six months, 12 months, right? If there is a crisis in the world, People might just buy, put their money in, a, in the government bond of the US. They might not get much interest, but they're not losing money. Say the stock market is going down a lot, right? Take my money out of stocks and put in US government bonds, right? I'll get just a little bit of interest. So people use these short-term bonds for different reasons. But the one we're interested in is a 10-year <coughs> government bond, okay? This is the main asset uh, used for calculating uh, the risk-free rate. So here we can see it's 2.14%. So that's the yield. Okay. So this is the price. So this bond pays coupon. It pays 2% interest every year into your bank account. Okay. So it pays 2% interest every year, and it's going to pay you back the money. Okay. Then how much are you going to pay for this bond? Okay, I asked you earlier, but now it pays 2% interest. Maybe you're going to pay more, right? So you're going to pay $987,000 for a $1 million bond, okay? 98.7%, okay? That's the price at the moment. That's changing, that can change, right? So that, what does that mean? It's, I get 2% every year, from, right? But the price is less than 100%. So therefore, the interest rate is going to be higher than 2%, okay? 2.14%. So I'm getting basically, this is the yield, 2.14% interest. So I invest, I put my money in US government bonds now, basically I'm getting 2.14% a year in interest. How much do you get in the bank if you put your money in, in the bank every year? How much interest do you get? One point five percent depends, right? In Korea, you might get higher because inflation is higher than Korea, right? You might get a higher uh, interest rate. So here we have the inflation protected securities, okay? Inflation protected. They are called TIPS. It means that inflation protected. We already have no uncertainty in the U.S., right? In this case, no inflation. Okay, so inflation protected means 
at the end of the year, the government will pay you. Inflation was 1.5%, the government will give you 1.5%. Do you understand? So it's protected against inflation. So we can forget about inflation. Okay? So what is that yield is going to tell us the real interest rate. So the 10-year bond is 0.59%. So about 0.6% currently. So that gives us an idea of the real interest rate. The real interest rate is people's patience. Okay? So if the real interest rate is about 0.59%, okay, and the <coughs> normal government bond, the nominal rate is 2.14, what do people expect inflation to be <coughs> in the US for the next 10 years, average inflation? What do people expect? This is the nominal interest rate. Right? This is the real interest rate. Then what is inflation going to be? One point five five percent. Okay, this is the market expected inflation. Do you understand? Yes. This is what people the IMF will make a forecast. Okay? The IMF the economists will do a lot of research, study the US. They will say, we expect inflation to be 2% in the US, right? The US Central Bank will also do research. They will say, we expect inflation to be 1.8%, okay? But this is what the market thinks inflation will be. So this is important, okay? Do you understand the market? <coughs> market means everybody in the world. Okay, people who are buying and selling and trading, they think inflation in the US will be 1.55% average over the next 10 years. So how did we find this? We found this by using this combination of two bonds, right? The normal bond and the inflation protected bond. So we can find the information that we need to do the equation. Nominal interest rate minus inflation equals real interest rate. If we know two of those things, we can find the other one. Okay? So the real interest rate, it's a rough measure. Is that going to be different for a different country or the same for a different country? What do you think? Now we know the real interest rate by using this kind of US government bond. Do you think that's going to be the same for a different country or not? No. Um, Why not? Okay, well, this is the market, right? People have a choice. I can buy US government bonds, I can buy Russian government bonds, I can buy Korean government bonds. I'm a global investor. Right? So the real interest rate is going to be more or less similar. Because we're talking about people who are buying financial products. Okay, what is their preference? Are they patient or not? Investors, right? These days, investors can invest anywhere they want, really. Okay, if they try hard enough, they can invest anywhere they want. Okay? So this is not going to be more or less the same in different countries. So we can put this into another country, like we want to find out about the euro. We can do this, use this re as the real interest rate. All we need to know now is the nominal interest for euro area. Use this real interest rate and we get the market expected inflation for anywhere. Okay? So, do you have any questions so far? No? no. Yield, yield yes. and real interest rate are the same. We, yield and real interest rate. Only for the, the Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, not for the other one, right? For Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, we have no inflation, no uncertainty. So, the real interest rate is equal to the interest or the yield, okay? But on the, the other one that we looked at, inflation is included. So real interest rate and inflation is going to give us the nominal interest rate or the yield, okay? So just on this one, 
the, this uh, Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. That tells us the real interest rate. So if you want to check, get an idea of the real interest rate, just go and check what is the 10 year one. This is for five years, this is for 10 years, right? 20 years. <coughs> so it means that every year, uh, pe people want a 0.6% because of patience. Because I don't have the money now, I have to wait until next year. Okay, does that make sense to you? You prefer an apple now or next year or you don't care? No. Hmm? Which do you prefer? Hands up. Who prefers an apple now? Who prefers an apple next year? Who doesn't care? So different people have different ideas about the real interest rate. Everybody has different preferences, right? You might be more impatient than you. But this is just the average of every all investors. Okay? So uh, in this case, the US government is going to pay me back the money. I don't have to worry about inflation. If inflation is 10%, the US government will pay me 10% at the end of the year. Okay? It's protected against inflation. So why is it not zero? Why is it not zero? People prefer to have money today than next year. Why? Because I want to buy something now. I prefer to buy something now than next year. Okay? Can we put a number on this? Yes. What's the number? Over well, 10 years, about 0.6%. Okay? Would you say that that's the number for you? You're, you would 0.6% prefer to have an apple now than next year? Or more? More? Right? Anyway, that's the average of uh, investors. So, uh, you can check about that more uh, in your own time. We can see that when a country has high inflation, the yield on the bond will be higher. So, if we check on Bloomberg, we can go to markets, rates and bonds here. Do you know Bloomberg website? Okay, so just we can go to markets and bonds, rates and bonds, click on rates and bonds. Which is a country here with high inflation? US, Canada, Mexico, or Brazil? Brazil. Brazil. So what's Brazil's yield? 5.4%. Okay? <coughs> US, we just saw, two point, it's changed already. 2.14 to 2.13, right? Brazil, 5.44. Why? Mainly because of inflation. Okay? There's also going to be a little bit of uncertainty in Brazil, too. A little bit of uncertainty. Okay, not much, because most governments don't default, right? Just It's quite rare for the government to default. Just Greece and Argentina, Uruguay, Kazakh, maybe Kazakhstan, right? Uh, in the last 15, 10 or 15 years, right? So Mexico also has higher inflation. Canada, do you think Canada has higher or lower inflation than the US? Lower inflation than the US, right? Canada is also going to be virtually no risk, no risk country. So the difference in these is basically inflation. Okay. Uh, <coughs> where do you want to invest if you were an investor? U.S., Canada, Mexico, or Brazil? Mexico. Why? Brazil. Yield is high, but inflation is also high. When you change your Mexican money back to U.S. dollars at the end of the year the Mexican money will be worth less. So it's going to even out, right? So you can't just say the yield is high, right? You might say that, I think that the Mexican economy is improving, so inflation might uh, go down, or the Mexican peso might get stronger, Mexican currency might get stronger, right? So if we look at Europe, we can see Greece. Now Greece is an interesting example. 8.7%, okay? The reason Greece has the same inflation because they're using the same currency, the euro, okay? It has the same real interest rate. The only difference for Greece is uncertainty, all right? People think Greece defaulted a few years ago. In the summertime, Greece nearly defaulted, okay? Do you want to invest in Greece? 
No. If you had to pick between Greece and Germany for the same interest rate, where would you invest? Germany, right? So clearly, it's not going to be the same. Right? There's uncertainty. So Germany is just 0.72%. Quite low inflation in the EU. Okay? And so Germany is the risk-free basic rate for Europe. We look at Germany. Okay? Uh, the UK uses a different currency, the British pound. That's why it's much higher. Okay? France also used the euro. But people think Germany is safer than France. Okay? That much safer. Italy also used the euro. Okay, Spain, the Netherlands, say, Portugal, Greece is the highest one. Look at Switzerland, you have to pay them money. You have to pay them money to get the Swiss franc. Would you pay the bank interest to take your money? No, why do you think Switzerland is so low? Very stable. Very low inflation or deflation. The Swiss currency is like a safe haven, traditionally, in the world. During World War II, Switzerland was a neutral country. So all of the Nazis put their money in Switzerland, right? Where does Kim Jong-un have his money? Switzerland. It's kind of safe haven. So when there is some crisis in the world, people often buy the Swiss franc. Traditionally, during the wars or different times. So the Swiss currency, Europe is having a problem then the Swiss currency can get stronger. So if people expect the Swiss currency to get stronger, they might accept negative interest rates. Because when they change the Swiss francs back to euros, at the end of the year, they're going to get back more euros. Right? The Swiss franc got stronger. But also Switzerland uh, maybe it has deflation at the moment. Do you understand deflation? Yes. So we can understand looking at these bonds, then if we look at Asia, uh, we can see which country has the highest inflation here? Uh, India. <coughs> India, right? Which country has the lowest? Japan. Japan, traditionally a very low inflation country. Okay, so if you invest in Japan, 0.39%. So we'll talk about it later. That's one reason why a lot of Japanese people invest in other countries. Okay? If you are a Japanese person, you could invest in Japanese bonds and get 0.4%. Or you could invest in another country and hope that the currency, especially these days, the Japanese currency is getting weaker, right? So you hope that the currency gets stronger against the yen and then you can make profit. So uh, we can see that South Korea, similar to the US, 2.28%. So that would tell me that Inflation in Korea must be lower than the U.S., okay? Because uncertainty is higher in Korea than the U.S. So Korean bonds should be more higher yields. If I have to invest, choose between Korea and the U.S., I'm going to choose the U.S., right? If it's the same yields, okay? Because it's, uh, the economy is more developed, okay? So it's more certainty. But... The reason it's almost the same, Korea at the moment has low inflation. Okay. So, do you have any questions about this present value of money? What's the meaning of coupon? Coupon is uh, when you go to the shopping center, not so much these days, they have points cards. But in the old days when I went shopping, they used to give you some coupon, like points or tickets. Then the next time you come, you get another coupon. Then after you get 10 coupons, or do you go to Paris Baguette? In Paris Baguette, they give you some coupon, right? They give you some stamp. So you collect the stamp, and you get some bread at the end, right? So <coughs> coupon in, for bond means you collect your 2% every year. Okay? You buy the bond here, but you're going to collect 2% every year. So the coupon is, they just make up the coupon as a number like this, 2%, 2.5%. Uh, it pays a coupon. So you don't just get all the money back at the end. That's called a zero coupon bond, this one. Zero coupon, no coupon. Just you pay this money now, and you get the money back in the last year. But some people want to get interest every year. So that's called a coupon. They get the pay, coupon payment every year, and their money back at the end. Okay. 
<coughs> so, good question. So, we should all be clear now that money today is not as bad, sorry, is more <coughs> valuable than money in the future. Okay? And we use the interest rate to tell us how much more. In the US, 2.14% a year. Right? So the money today, let's say over an average of 10 years, that's going to be difference of about 24 whatever percent. Right? We can do the equations later. So we just need to understand about this real interest rate is related to people's preference and patient. So uh, then let's move on to talk about uncertainty, also related. We talked about inflation, everybody understands, right? We talked about the real interest rate. So let's talk a little bit about uncertainty. So we, we can't be sure about the future. Are you sure about the future? What's going to happen? No. So we said generally some <coughs> assets, such as the US government <coughs> bonds, are classified as risk-free. Because we need, you could say to me, well, there could be a nuclear war, right? The Terminator could fail. <laughs> Did you watch Terminator Genesis? Yes. Terminator could fail, and Genesis system could take over the world, right? And then you wouldn't get your money back on the US government bonds. So it's not risk-free, right? But in the practical situation, how do you say practical? Shilje, Shilje, <coughs> Shilje Jokura. <laughs> Practically, we can say that barring a world war or the end of the world, the US government bond is risk free. Okay? So we call this risk free. And then we can have other assets is classified against the US bond, like we saw Greece or other ones, right? Risk is this or risk is that or so on. Okay, that is called, we can get, this is called credit rating. So credit rating tells us, can the company pay back their money? Do you have a credit card? Yes. Do you understand credit? Yes. What's another word for credit? Like a loan, right? So this is a rating. Do you understand rating? about whether you can pay back your loan or not. You get a, a credit rating from the bank. Okay? If you don't pay back your loans, you're going to get a bad rating. It would be hard to get a loan again in the future. So it's the same for countries. Greece didn't pay back their loans. They're going to get a bad rating. Okay? It's going to be hard for them to get a loan in the future. Okay? So we have some agencies. Okay? So let's have a look at, at this credit rating for different uh, countries. So just I'm using the website Trading Economics because it puts the information together uh, easily in Korean. United States here. Amigo. <laughs> Mexico. <coughs> so here, can you understand this kind of thing in Korean? Yes. I don't see the option for changing to English. Can you see here the option for changing to English? Maybe it's easier for you guys to understand in Korean. So, here we're looking for the. Can you find the credit rating agency here?
Colin, is it under Tom? No? Or, or uh, it, um, which heading? What's the name of the heading? John Gu? Yes. Yeah. The last yes. one. Xinyang uh, Gu? Rating. Okay, so we can see all the ratings. So just for <coughs> foreign students out of translation. So we have three main rating agencies. S&P, Moody's, and Fitch. Okay, there are three main rating agencies who classify the country. Okay, then we have here trading economics who make their own one just because it's easier to see. Okay, so they give the rating to the country. S&P B, Moody's B1, right? B plus, BA to EB. So each agency has their own rating system. Clearly A is the best, right? B is not as good. C, D, E is worse. Uh, this one is a little bit clearer because it's points out of 100. Okay, so here we can see 97 points out of 100. Australia, okay? Uh, 97, 98 <coughs> points out of 100, Austria. So can Austria pay back their debt? Yes, this is the top uh, rating for Australia, AAA here, right? AAA. For, S for Austria, AA plus. So, then we move down here, BB minus is not that good, right? This is Bahrain, okay, uh, Belarus, okay, so just we can see that there's an agency. This agency looks at the economy, they look at the government, and they give them a rating, credit rating. Can they pay back the money or not? <coughs> so this is classifying the uncertainty, okay? How uncertain are we that this government will pay back the money in the future? Canada, AAA. So we can go down and we can look at the AAAs, the Denmark, they're all seen as risk-free. Right? AAA risk-free. Denmark, Canada, Germany, right? Uh, Liechtenstein. Okay, let's see if we can find a country which has a CC. Here's Venezuela. Nine, nine points out of 100. <coughs> Okay. Ukraine. Okay, Ukraine has some problem at the moment. <laughs> Are you going to lend money to their government? Or is there a high uncertainty? Usually in the war there's a lot of uncertainty, right? Uh, so sometimes these rating agencies make mistakes. They give a good rating and then things change suddenly. Okay. Like in the financial crisis, they were criticized because they gave some AA rating to the banks, US banks. They gave some C rating to the Chinese banks. But actually the Chinese banks performed much better in the financial crisis than the US banks. Right? So they get some criticism and they make some mistakes sometimes. But if you're working, your boss will accept if you tell them S&P gives this rating or Moody's give this rating, or Fitch give this rating, right? Because people who work for these companies are quite smart people. They have done a lot of research, probably they have PhD degrees, right? So you're basing your, your work or opinion on the research that these guys do. Of course, the problem is that you don't pay them for the rating. The companies pay them to give them a rating. So a little bit of conflict of interest, right? Company pays to get the rating. So if, you want, if you're a company and you want to sell bonds, we'll talk about later, you have to pay them to give your company a rating. And then they give your company a rating. Okay, do you have any questions about rating agencies? <clears throat> so an I a basic idea about uncertainty is this, another word we could write here instead of uncertainty would be risk. Okay. So, if we take a higher risk, we get a higher return. Yeah. Do you understand return? Yeah. So, if I want a higher return, I'm going to have to take a higher risk. That's a basic idea of finance. Okay? It's not going to be a situation where I can easily get a high return. <coughs> so, you, you shouldn't believe if somebody tells you, oh, I can make you 20% next year with no risk. Are you going to believe them? No, how much can you make with no risk until next year? 
What percent can you make with no risk? We saw already. Can anybody tell me? 2.14%, right? You can invest in US government bonds and make 2.14% with no risk. So if somebody tells you, oh, you can see sometimes on the internet, some pop-up window, invest in Brazil, forest, risk-free, 30%, guaranteed. Are you going to believe it? You invest your money immediately? Yes, great. <laughs> No, oh, there is a basic idea in finance that if you want to get the return, you have to take more risk. Okay? Yeah. So, if you want to invest in Greece, you can get 8%, but you took more risk to get that 8%. So, you have to make a decision when you're investing, how much risk do I want to take, how much return do I want to get. So, that's one reason a lot of pension funds invest in government bonds. Do you understand pension? How do you say pension in Korean? Yongum. Yes. And so the Yongum fund will often invest in in government bonds because low low or no risk, right? They can invest some of, at least some of their money there. Whereas very high risk is a new startup company, right? New technology <coughs> company just starting up. If I invest there, it's really high risk. So how much are you going to ask them to pay you? If you're going to invest. You're, he made a new technology company in his basement, right? Like a new payment system for the internet. He thinks it's really great. It's going to make a lot of... How much money do you want him to pay you at the end of the year if you're going to give him a loan? How much percent? If you're going to give him a loan, how much percent will you want? 60 percent? <laughs> It's a loan, so maybe as a stock investor you could get 60%, but a loan you might not be able to repay that kind of interest. But it's going to be a much higher interest rate, right? So maybe 15 or 20%. Or you might not give him a loan at all, right? You might decide not to give him a loan because it's a high risk, okay? So let's take a break now for 10 minutes. <coughs>